With a good understanding of both TypeScript and React applications under our belt, it's time to go back to SharePoint Framework and let's try building that meter web part once again, but this time let's use the React template. So let's go ahead and make a directory called uh, meter react. We'll cd into that. And then we will go ahead and run the yeoman Microsoft slash SharePoint generator. And we're going to accept a lot of the same defaults and the same values in this case. So we're going to go through this once again, SharePoint online only, use the current folder, default admin settings. We are building a web part. The name of our web part is going to be meter once again, and uh, we'll leave the default description. Uh, but the big difference here is we're gonna choose React as our framework we would like to use. And that's gonna install our NPM dependencies. It's gonna take a few moments and we will get started as soon as that's done. Okay, that is now complete. So before we run up our Gulp dev server, let's go ahead and open this up in code and we will take a look. And you'll notice in Visual Studio Code here that there is a lot of similarities with your pure JavaScript framework choice. The biggest difference is gonna be once you get into the source folder and you go into web parts, you're going to see not only a meter web part.ts file just as before, but also there is a components folder, which is gonna contain our React components or TSX files, as you can see there. So let's go ahead and open up meterwebpart.ts and in this file, you have a default class meterwebpart just as before. And the biggest difference is gonna be in the render method, instead of outputting an ES6 template string, it's actually creating a React component as the HTML output for this web part. And you'll see in this case, it's creating a component called meter, which is actually coming from this TSX file in the components folder over on the left, and it's passing as the props to that top level component, the web part properties of the web part itself. And just as before, we get a default prop or property for this web part called description. Everything else in this web part file is going to be the same. Really the only difference is that instead of outputting that template string, you actually have a React component controlling the output of your web part. So let's take a look at that React component and open that up. You will notice that it contains basically the same HTML as our ES6 template string had before. So we have the welcome to SharePoint just like we had before and all the same stuff. The only difference is that this is in a render method within a React component. So let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm gonna shrink this down and in our terminal, let's run Gulp serve to start up the local SharePoint framework workbench. Okay. In our workbench, let's go ahead and add our meter web part. And just as before, we get all that boilerplate on the right and in our React component on the left, we could say, welcome to meter web part. And as soon as we hit save, you'll see the component update on the right. The cool thing about this is we can now use the best of both worlds in terms of utilizing web part properties, just as we did before, to create a nice editable experience for your content authors. But instead of rendering the output using a template string, we can get a lot more complex and a lot more fancy in terms of using all the cool things that we can do in React components. Not only that, but you can also spawn off child instances of other React components from this top level component called meter, which could then allow you to compartmentalize your web part and have various components that are only focused on handling specific functionality. So just as we did before, I do want to add a couple of web part properties, such as the title and the percentage. And we're going to recreate that meter or that visualization of the donut chart inside of this, but we're going to do all this using the React components instead. And adding web part properties is the same process as before. We're going to go up to our interface here, iMeter web part props, and we're going to add a property title of type string as well as percentage of type number. And we also have to open up our manifest file 
So let's open that up and go down here to our pre-configured entries where you can see our default values for our properties here. So let's add title, which will have a default value of an empty string and percentage, which will have a default value of zero. We'll go ahead and save that and close it. And now that we've added those to our manifest file, let's go down to our get property pane configuration method and we need to create some text fields for those two new properties. So I'm going to duplicate this twice. We'll add a title text field which will have a label of title. We'll leave the description as it was before and then we'll add percentage with a label of percentage. And as we save this in our web part when we edit it we have our nice three editable fields on the right. So we could put in performance, how we are doing, and percentage will be 75 or whatever. So that's all the same as it was before. However, because we are actually passing these properties down as props to our top level React component, whenever you're working in the React template in SharePoint Framework, you may actually have to update this in several other places, depending on how many components deep you're gonna pass these props using that one-way data flow that's in place in React. So at the very least, we know we wanna pass the title and the percentage down to our meter component. And that's gonna be up here in this render method you see here is where it's actually passing those, uh, the description, which is currently the only one. I can't actually do this yet. If I try to add title to this and add this.properties.title, it's gonna say, wait a second, that's not a prop on this React component. We don't have a title. Uh, prop that you can actually pass in. So we need to open up our iMeter props. You can see here, iMeter props, there's already an interface set up for this component and we need to make sure that we can add it to that React component. They do this a little bit differently in React components in SharePoint Framework in that they don't place their interfaces at the top of the file, they put them into their own dedicated files. So you can see here, it's actually importing iMeter props from, an, from a file in this current directory, and it's passing that in as the props for our React component using the assertion down here. You can do it however you want. You can reorganize this. I'm just gonna follow the same schema that Microsoft has set up for us, and we'll continue to edit this in this external file, but it's really up to you how you wanna organize that. A uh, shortcut is you can just hold down control or command and click on that and you jump right to the file itself, which makes it super easy to get to. So let's go ahead and add title as a string, as a web part prop here, and also percentage as a number. So now that we've added those in our web part TS file, it's now no longer gonna be happy until we have all three of those props pass down to our meter component. So we'll add title as this.properties.title and percentage as this.properties.percentage. And there we go. And as this updates, even though we're not using this yet, just to show you in the React Dev Tools, uh, if we pull those up over here, You'll notice that there's any number of components in a SharePoint framework page. We have the workbench itself. We have this other thing called Canvas component that has a whole bunch of stuff inside of it. And you don't really need to worry about those. You'll see your custom component is always gonna appear at the bottom here. And there, of course, is our meter, which has the props, description, percentage, and title. So now that we have those three props in our component, we can actually delete all of this boilerplate here and we can rebuild our component using our normal React component workflow. So what we'll do here is just as before, we'll add an H1 tag and within this, we'll say this.props.title. We'll add a paragraph with this.props.description and then as soon as we save that, we get a nice, simple, unstyled web part where we can actually edit this and in real time, we can edit the title and the description, just so. I think it's a good idea to probably create a child component for the donut chart uh, or for the visualization of our percentage. So let's go ahead and do that in our sidebar under components. We can just right click new file and we'll type donut.tsx. And within this file, we do need to create a React component. So we will import star as React from React. 
and we will export default class donut extends react.component. Now our donut component will only need one prop in this case. So I will actually go over here and we'll create a separate file for that just to keep in line with how we're organizing our other interfaces. And we'll create I donut props.ts. And within this, we'll say export interface I donut props. And this will have a percentage of type number. It's going to be the only prop for this one. So now in our donut component, we're going to have to import I donut props from I donut props. And then we will use the assertion to pass I donut props into our component here. And now that we have that prop, we can create a public render method, which is going to return a JSX element. And within here, we will return a div which will contain the actual visualization for that percentage. But for now, let's just go ahead and put in this.props.percentage and we'll add a percent symbol after that just to test this out. So we've created this child component and now we can import that into our meter. Import donut from donut. That's making me hungry. And we'll uh, add down here donut percentage equals this.props.percentage. So we just created a child component called donut and we're passing the prop down to it. And sure enough, over here on the right, you see there is the 75%. And in our React Dev Tools down below, you'll see that child component where it has a prop of percentage 75. Thus far, all is well, and we are working well in the React world inside of SharePoint Framework. We're starting to see how these components can come together to form up a larger web part. So let's update our donut visualization and make sure that it can do more than just a very boring percentage output. So just as before, we're going to paste in that SVG. I'm going to copy and paste that from the old solution. And you can't use this wholesale. You can't just copy and paste this in and expect it to work. And in particular, you'll notice uh, it's already the linter is giving us some hints. It's saying you can't use class. Um, classes are a little weird in React. You actually have to use class name. So I'm going to select all the instances of that and we'll update that to be class name like so. And not only that, but in React, you cannot use attributes with a dash in them, which is used quite a bit in SVG. So everywhere where we have, for instance, stroke width, we're going to need to update that and it needs to be camel cased. So stroke width, just like that. The same thing with stroke dash array, stroke dash offset, and text anchor down here. I think that's all the places where we're doing that. And then, of course, we have the old ES6 template string format uh, where we have cache and then curly brackets. We just delete the cache symbol there. And then it's not this.properties, but rather this.props.percentage. Now, as we save here, we're not quite done yet, but at the very least, we will get some sort of visualization and we'll get our number there. Let me close our dev tools. And as we are to edit this, you'll see here as we update this number, the number itself is actually updating and that's working great. Uh, the donut chart, however, is not. And the reason is before in our template, we were setting the stroke dash array and using an ES6 template string to actually output the value here. And that template string won't work in React's JSX. So instead we need to change this to an expression. So let's do that by selecting all this and putting curly brackets around it. And then we'll delete the double quotes. And then I'll just put a template string around that. So now it'll actually execute as a template string, uh, but we will have to update this.properties to be this.props. And then now when we save, it should work just the same as before. So we have 75, 50, 15, etc. Great, so that was pretty quick and easy to get us back to a point where we were before. We don't have our styles in yet, so let's go ahead and add those as well. That's gonna be a quick and easy copy and paste job. So we'll take our styles from the previous solution. We will open up our module.sass file, which is the same as before with its boilerplate that we can delete. So let's empty everything out. And in this meter class, we'll just 
paste in our style declarations that we had before. And as soon as we hit save there, you'll see that update over on the right and it's looking good. So one improvement I do want to add over here is uh, it's kind of a harsh update every time you update this, especially if you're going from like 10 to 50 or 10 to 90. And because that's a, a bit of a harsh change, we can add a CSS transition on the visualization of the fill there that will allow us to kind of um, do a, a little bit of an ease or an animation between states, which might look a little bit more polished. So the way that that is actually changing is you'll notice here in our component, we have the stroke dash array. And this is actually what is updating and changing the fill value of this around the circumference of this circle element. So what we can do in our SAS file is we can say, anytime you have a circle within this web part, let's set up a transition on stroke dash array. And that can be, I don't know, 0.3 seconds. And we'll use the easing function on that. And whenever we save that, we can change that. And then it's hard to see. Actually, maybe that's a little bit too slow. We'll do 0.8 seconds, or too fast, rather. Um, but when we slow that down a bit, you can see as we change this, the meter actually kind of goes through a transition before it actually reaches its destined value. That looks nicer. It's good.